Welcome to the Covalence Intro to TypeScript course. I'm Matt Landers, and I'll be your instructor for this course. Now, in this video, we're just going to talk a little bit about what TypeScript is, why you should use it, and how to get started. So here we go. So TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. And what that means is that uh, TypeScript just gives us some advanced features on top of JavaScript, but it's actually compiled down to JavaScript whenever we actually run it. So TypeScript isn't ran natively by itself. It's always compiled to a JavaScript file. And then JavaScript file is what we would use to link in our browser or run in Node or wherever we want we can run JavaScript. Uh, it allows us to use future versions of JavaScript now. So for instance, we can use um, you know, template literals or something like that, put it in a browser and know that it's going to be safe. Uh, and it will convert that into something that a browser can understand. So uh, it also gives us strong types. And this is the main reason that we have TypeScript is for the typing. The typings uh, allow us to catch more bugs at design time and to get more accurate IntelliSense. So the reason that TypeScript was created was for this purpose. So IDEs can give you way more information about your code whenever you have types, because it can infer a lot of things uh, from those types. Whereas when you have a dynamic language like JavaScript, you really have to guess a lot of times of what that variable is at any point in time. But if we define it with a type, then we know what it should be all the time, and we can make sure that it is that type throughout the life cycle of the application. Uh, so to get started to using TypeScript, which we're gonna do a little example right now, you just have to npm install, TypeScript minus G, so we install that globally. That gives us a command line uh, utility called TSC, and we're gonna use that in order to compile our TypeScript. Now we're gonna do this from the command line right now, just while we're learning. Uh, keep it simple and so that you understand what's actually happening. So let's go ahead and create our first TypeScript file. So I'm just gonna add a file to this project. I'm gonna add Oh, that's a folder. I'm going to add um, hello.ts. And in here, we're going to write some JavaScript first because I want to show you that TypeScript is really just JavaScript. So we're going to create a function where we can pass in a name. And then we're just going to console.log out. And we're going to use a uh, temple literal here. We're going to say hello and then the name of that person. And then we're going to call this so that we can see something happen. And we'll call it with my name. So now, so far, this looks just like JavaScript um, that you've seen before. Uh, we are using a template literal, which aren't, it doesn't work in every browser. So we're going to see what TypeScript can do for us here on that. So I'm going to go to my command line. Uh, I'm going to show you what's in here. We just have our TypeScript file. We're just type tsc hello.ts. And that's going to output a JavaScript file as well. So we can see it right there. So now what we can do is say node hello.js, and it'll run that code. So you'll notice we can't run the TS file. Well, node will run it because it technically is valid. But once we add a type in there, it won't run. Uh, so let's see what this actually looks like. So let's open up our hello.js file and see what we got. So in this file, you'll see that it converted our template literal. I'm gonna pull these up side by side so that you can see what's going on. All right, so you'll see that over here we have our template literal, but then over here it's converted that into normal string concatenation. And why it does that is that we that by default, uh, TypeScript compiles down to ECMAScript 5 compatible JavaScript and uh, template literals aren't available in ECMAScript 5. So when that compiles down, it puts something in here that is compatible. So now if we use this in our browser or something like that, we can be sure that it's gonna work uh, even back to like Internet Explorer 9, uh, 10, those um, older browsers that you might run into and you want your code to actually work. All right, so let's look at um, this error here is just because I have the JavaScript file open now. Um, it thinks that it's been defined twice, but it hasn't. Uh, so I'm gonna close the JavaScript file 
And let's look what happens whenever we add some types. So I open this up. I'm just trying to get that error to go away so you're not confused. All right, so now if we want to add a type here, what we can do is say colon string. So this is the format that we use to define types, especially as parameters. We can also do it out here. So I can say let name colon string equal test. So it looks something like this. All right. Um, it's just saying I can't redeclare that variable, so let's just name it name two. And now we're safe. All right, but this is how you would declare it as a variable and set the type. Now, the cool thing about declaring the types is like this. If I say name two equals 24, we'll get an error. And it says 24 is not assignable to type string. So now TypeScript is giving us a little bit of help here. Now we can't assign this number to something that is defined as a string. And it happens in our parameters too, so I'm going to get rid of that. Now down here, if I were to say 24, same issue. It says the argument of type 24 is not assignable to parameter of type string. But if I put my name back in here, it starts working again. So this is pretty cool. So now let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and compile this again. So, uh, whoops. See, now Node cannot run the TypeScript file because it doesn't know what this uh, semicolon is whenever I define the string because node only understands JavaScript. So if we compile that hello.ts right and now we have our JS hello.js and now it's working. So let's look at that file real quick <clears throat> and see what happens. So we'll see that it pulled out the typing so that's no longer there anymore. So we're only getting this benefit at design time which is what we're trying to do. We want the IDE to be able to help us find bugs in our code. And that's really what's happening here is that now if somebody tries to use our project and they're using TypeScript and they don't know what parameter is supposed to be passed into greeting, if they try to pass in a number, it'll fail. You'll get an error. So I want to show you something as well. So if I put 24 here, and even though um, you know this is going to show an error, I have to close this out because every time I open it, normally you won't be opening your JavaScript files, but You'll see this error is here, but also if I go down here and I try to compile it again, we'll get that same error output here. So it won't compile it. All right. So it'll make us fix all of our issues before we actually run our code. And this can be really important as we're passing objects around. So imagine that this greeting, instead of just passing in a string, which is pretty simple, what if it expected like an options? Um, <clears throat> that had certain things on it. So, and it was name colon string. So now we're saying you need to pass in this options thing and it's got name colon string on it. Now here we're saying this isn't compatible with name colon string. So now what it's expecting is something with name on it like this. And then here we can say options dot name. And you'll see that we get that IntelliSense. So, Whenever we have more complex data types like this, that's when we really start to see the benefits. So imagine calling a web service that has a type on it, like a REST JSON service, and then that returns some data back, and we don't know what's on that object. Well, this allows us to define what's on the object so that anywhere that that's used, we can uh, know if we're going to run into errors or not. So for instance, if I put something else on here, should get an error. So there we go. It says uh, that age isn't supposed to be on here because this is how we define this type. And now we get an error. So let's just show how uh, this works. I'm going to save this, compile it, and then open up the JavaScript again. And there we go. So we'll see the options. There's no typing here. Uh, it, re it changed this um, concatenation, and it looks pretty similar though. So it really outputs pretty clean JavaScript. That's one cool thing about TypeScript that everybody has liked about it, is that the, the output of JavaScript is still pretty readable and pretty clean, even though you're not really going to be looking at it that often. 
Uh, all right, so this is the intro to TypeScript. Kind of gives you an idea of what's in there. We're obviously going to dig in a lot more so that you can start using it uh, more effectively. But this is the uh, the basics of how it works. Um, and then when we come back, we're going to look more into types, how we can use them in a bigger project, and then how to set up our environment uh, so we compile as we code. And we don't have to go into the command line all the time and make that work. All right. Uh, go ahead and play around with that, and I'll see you in the next lecture.